Uh, I'm Tom Laybourne. Um, I'll start. I'll preface this with uh, I, I'm a middle school science teacher. Uh, I teach south of here in Jefferson County, and when I introduce my students to physical science, I have a hook, and the hook that I use in particular, I'm not going to show the video to use guys because I suspect all of you are familiar with it. Are all of you familiar with a actor named Slim Pickens? Yes. Yeah. There was a film in which Slim Pickens rides an atomic bomb down upon a Soviet rocket silo and blows it to smithereen. Awesome movie. So I chose that as the uh, kind of theme for my, my, uh, my introduction here. Operation Juggernaut, or, or how I used amateur radio to build a more effective process for teaching student science. Not as good as Dr. Strange over how I learned to stop fearing, and thunder, but hey, you're with me. Uh, the point of it is, is I, I'm, I'm not going to try and deceive you. I am not so passionate about amateur radio that I, I stay awake at night thinking about dit dits and da da's and all that. I am passionate about helping my nation to be successful and specifically to help young men and women to graduate from high school uh, so that they can get jobs. I think that what we have here is the mechanism in which to do that. And I have proof to show that that is exactly what this is. And I would like to show, uh, share that with you guys uh, because I, I'm excited about it, and I don't even know anything about radio. I mean, I'm kind of learning, uh, but it's, it's pretty successful so far. So here's what you're going to be seeing today. Uh, and by the way, I, I'm all about brevity, uh, so I'm going to be going through this quickly. I do ask that you hold your questions until the end. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I will absolutely humor anything that you guys got. Let me blast through what I got, and I suspect I'll probably answer most of what you got, and if I don't, I'll hit it at the end. You guys with me? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Amen. All right. I'll give you a background. Uh, with my background, I'll be talking about where we're coming from in Jefferson County. I'll be talking about my idea. I have never had an original idea in my entire life. I haven't. Uh, but I'll tell you this. I'm absolutely about plagiarism. Uh, Totally, and I encourage my kids to do it, not without citing their stuff, but I, I'm not going to try and pretend that I have the market cornered on good ideas, because I don't. I just want success, and I know success works. I'm going to let you know how I got to where we are right now. And when I say we, I mean me. And there, there's some people in here who have actually witnessed some of the success that we've had, and I couldn't have got there without them. Thanks, partner. I'm going to talk to you about phenomena or a project-based instruction, phenomenon, competition. And finally, how it's relevant. And the last bit is going to be sustainment. And at the end, we'll talk about uh, our questions. All righty. Background, our problem set. This is where we're starting from. By the way, I'm not from Missouri. I was born in Minnesota. And I grew up in Colorado. And I have lived my entire life all over the entire globe. I spent 20 years in the Army, loved it, totally awesome. I encourage my students to do the same, but I'm not going to try and deceive you into being like, I know everything about Missouri. I don't. That was almost late, come, well, I was late getting here on time because I don't even know the roads right. Uh, but I'll tell you this much. What I have learned in living in Jefferson County, my, I moved here because my mom's getting pretty long in the tooth. My wife is from California. I wouldn't live in California if, like it was made out of like, I don't know, think of every positive thing you can possibly think of. I wouldn't want to live in California. It's a nice place, but I don't like the people. My wife's from there. <laughs> hey, amen. My mom's from Jefferson, or lives in Jefferson, down in Hillsborough. Now, she's, like I said, she's getting kind of long in years and I want to be around her. All our kin is from Missouri. I'm not. I don't know that much about it, but I wanted to be close to her because we moved out here. What I did discover about Jefferson County, Jefferson County is a tough place for many reasons. Uh, 
including drugs and poverty. Sure, that's not unique to Jefferson County, but it does have it in a peculiar way with something called meth, something called heroin. And with young people living in uh, situations where they don't have much money, or their families don't, you got a lot of students that when they go to school, the last thing on their mind is going to be education. Even some of them come to school strung out. So, with that being the problem set, I face each day at Woodridge Middle School about 150 students, between eight, mostly eighth graders, though I got a fistful of sixth graders as two. Drugs and truancy, it's tough to uh, compete with drugs, and it's tough to even uh, compete with truancy, not going to school. I don't think that's unique to this age. I suspect even back in Ot one or whatever, the kid didn't want to go to school. He just didn't want to go to school. And if his parents weren't going to hold their feet to the fire to get him there, they weren't going. So I had to find something which was more appealing than uh, not just dope, but also Fortnite, which is a video game that kids like to play, or Fallout 76, or there's like 50 zillion other ones. Now, don't, but don't get me wrong, they're actually pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> killing zombies or mutated communists or whatever, that's actually kind of cool. But it's pretty tough. Poor STEM scores, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Jefferson County has uh, the un unfortunate distinction in the state of Missouri of having one of the lower sets of scores in our entire state. Uh, for me, this is a, a peculiar challenge. Uh, I think this is despicable. If our opponents are people like the Red Chinese, who send people to school specifically to do this, to learn science, then we got a tough set ahead of us. My goal is to get these kids not just to do better in science, but to want to do better in science, to want to get those jobs so that they want to go to Mars, so that they want to make our nation better. And you know what? At a basic level, so that they want to do well themselves, so they want to survive. We haven't got a lot of money, limited budget. This isn't a remarkable surprise to anybody, I suspect. Money doesn't grow on trees. We're uh, prisoners of taxes, and I'm actually okay with that. I think we need to earn what we want. Let me see if I get it right here. Okay, there we go. So, uh, building a winning process. I, I don't want this to be the Laybourne show. I think I'm a pretty good guy at keeping people's attention. There's a 100% probability, as long as I'm living, and I'm breathing, I can keep your attention. But all of us are marked for death. And one day, I'm going to get tired of this. And I'm going to want to go and sit down underneath an umbrella and drink Mai Tais. And I'm not going to want to teach students. So I have to set up a mechanism which will be successful so that other people can come in behind me. You with me? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Awesome. Next Generation Science Standards and Missouri Standards. You guys have probably heard of things like Common Core. Yes? Yes. A lot of people got heartache with this. I don't. I think a common standard for the entire federal republic in the United States is a great idea because it regulates taxes and it helps us to actually funnel taxes where they need to go. But that's a baseline. And remember, this is just me. I'm not speaking for any other organization other than Thomas E. Laybourne. This is not the words of the federal public, the state of Missouri, or the Northwest District. You guys with me? All right. Just so you understand. So if you don't want to try and punch me in the kidneys later. All right. Understand this. Standards, if they are our baseline, that's our minimum. That's where we have to get as a minimum. It's not hard to get to the minimum. Getting to the minimum isn't going to get you onto the space station. Getting to the minimum 
is barely going to get you out of high school. Maybe it will, but that's the minimum. Sustainable. Budgets, as they are right now, are just sustainable. And I get it. They have to be. Because it is supported by the citizens of our republic. And those people also want to use their money for themselves, doing whatever they want to do. If homeboy wants to go and buy a Ferrari, okay. If he wants to squander his money on booze, okay. That's his problem, or hers. But so much of that money is going to go to taxes to support schools. An X amount is going to get us at the point where we have enough to get them to that baseline. That's the foundation. I am trying to build a process and a mechanism which will help them to get farther because I cannot depend on the whims of politicians. I cannot and I won't. So I'm going to do it on my own or maybe with other people's help. But this is where I'm starting. This was my problem set when I started out. Interesting. I remember when I was a kiddo, the stuff that I liked in school was stuff that I thought was interesting. My dad had a foundry. You guys have all seen, this is kind of a weird side note, but you've seen the reenactor people that go out and they pretend like they're in the Civil War and they shoot at each other. My dad's business when I was a boy was at a foundry and we made reproduction items for these reenactors. We make bullets and gun parts and saddles. We had a leather shop. We had a foundry. I can make a pick and pin. I, dude, I can make a pick and pin. There's probably about what, like .0001 people out there that know how to make a dang pick and pin for setting up a horse. I can do that. Well, because it was peculiar, I'll level with you. It was interesting. I want to have what I'm doing in the school interesting enough that it keeps kids coming back. Because you know what? I was more interested in going home at the end of the day after school so I could mess around in the foundry, so I could mess around in our chemical workshop, because we had that, to mess around in the leather shop, because it was more interesting than listen to Mr. Costello, I had to look up his name, as I'd actually forgotten it, drone on in his chemistry work. Great dude, I'm sure he's a great guy. Let me quantify that. Talk about stuff which I didn't even know what he was talking about. Propaganda. A lot of what we're doing here is to try not just to keep kids interested for a little bit, but also to keep them interested for a long time and to get their folks interested. And some of it is advertisement. I say pop propaganda very, very deliberately because I want people to see it and I'm not going to try and sugarcoat it because my purpose is to try and sway them to my way. Absolutely. Catastrophic success. This is another goofy one which kind of flopped in my lap. A boss of mine ages ago talked about always being ready for catastrophic success. What happens if you are so good at getting people paying attention that you succeed unbelievably? Like, hypothetically, like if we invaded Iraq and then we rolled right over and then we happened to be in there. By the way, I spent two years in Iraq. Anyway. All right. And then spread success. I don't want what we're doing right here at Woodridge to just end there. If we're successful here, I want it to spill out in the rest of the Northwest District. And if it's successful there, I want it to spill over into Fox. I want it to spill over into uh, well, Rockwood. I want it to spill out into Imperial. I want it to spill out into other places. Because if it works in one spot, kids, so you guys know this, because you're all kids yourself at some point. You're all about the same critter. Doesn't matter what color you are or creed, you're all about the dang same. And if you can succeed in one spot, you can succeed in another. You with me? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Here's how I got to where I am right now. 
I am not going to deceive you in any way. I am not a ham. I'm trying. I'm desperately trying. But I'm not there yet. This whole adventure started with me wanting to build a foxhole radio. Any of you guys, ever, any of y'all Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts back in the day? I'm sure dozens of you. Any of you ever build a crystal radio? Yes. Uh -huh. My dad and I built a crystal radio when I was a boy. And I thought it was the coolest thing. And we got one channel. <laughs> and I thought it was about the most remarkable thing ever. We had that thing strung out across our clothesline. It was, it was grounded to our sink. And I thought it was, I was just like, Dad, you're the coolest guy ever. And you know what? It was cool. So here I am. I come out. This still had the army smell on me. And I come out and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make a difference. So I looked at each quarter that I had. School year is broken into four quarters, yes? So I had a project for each quarter. First quarter, they're going to drop an egg off of a building and it's not going to break. Home run. Second quarter, you're going to make a model that looks like an atom. Home run. Third quarter, you're going to build a thing called a trebuchet. It's a catapult, except it uses, instead of a catapult, which uses torsion, you're going to use centripetal force and a counterweight. Out of, you're going to make it out of popsicle sticks. Home run. Fourth quarter, you're going to build a crystal radio. Abject, complete, total failure. Because it sucked. It, it was just, it was lame. That like didn't work. I got one to work barely, and the kids are like, "Mr. Laypore, this is this is really dumb." And, and I was like, "Yeah, it, it really is. This is dumb. We're gonna do something else." So I had to like scrap everything and all these brilliant plans. It was dumb. And I was trying to come up with a better way to make my bad idea work. So I came to the people that I thought would help me the most ham radio operators in St. Louis. I came to the St. Louis Suburban Radio Club. And I said, and I even stood, I was right here. I stood right there. Yeah, maybe it might have been right there. It was like this region. I stood up and I said, hey, you know what? I, you guys said, hey, what's your call sign? I was like, I don't know. I, <laughs> I had a call sign ages ago. I didn't know what you're talking about. I didn't, I, I didn't know. Um, so I hit you guys up. Everyone that I hit you, I was like, hey, do you want to make a crystal radio? Like, what a dumb idea. Like, everybody said that. So I was like, but because I was evidently not that bright, I was like, oh, well, okay. So finally, I, I ended up calling the ARRL. And they said the same thing. What a horrible idea. Don't make a crystal radio. Here. <laughs> And I'm like, no, it's got to be a good idea. I remember how my dad and I made it. It was a dumb idea. And they and that guy right there, Cliff, advised me to check into the Teachers Institute. So I did. And I talked to some people there. And they recommended I go to this Teachers Institute, check out some other stuff. Also talk, recommended that I talk to a guy named Ward Silver. Uh, <laughs> Evidently, he's a big deal. Uh, <laughs> didn't know that. So I was dropping his name like it's nobody's business, and it turned out that was a, a good thing. Uh, so anyway, I got to go to the Teachers Institute. Uh, I also got my tech license. Thank you, Cliff. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Uh, so I went to the Teachers Institute. There's two of them. Trying my you-know-what off to go to it again this year for the second phase of it. What an absolute benefit to yours truly, and more importantly, to my students. Um, at the Teachers Institute, it was up in, a place, up in Dayton, Ohio. I, I can't think of any reason why I would go to Ohio or Indiana. I mean, like that whole reason, I, I don't know. But anyway, the Teachers Institute, home run. Absolute home run. Worth every second. And they paid for it. A double R L paid for it. They paid for the whole thing. I got to go there. It was a little, 
conking out in the Marriott. It was actually pretty darn good. And I learned more there and w talking to other teachers and other people that knew about radio and how to apply it to education than I could have just probably 10 years of me fumbling around on my own. Absolute home run. Totally worth it. They showed me <laughs> and they also told me to not ever, ever, ever do a, a foxhole radio. <laughs> they said that was the, a horrible idea. And I finally accepted it. I was like, okay, fine. I'm not going to build a crystal radio. And they showed me different kits. There was a guy named Kendall. Great guy. He showed me. We built a dang clock there. I never done that. Never did. The only other time I've soldered something was with Cliff, and he did most of it. He like held the torch while I made a dipole. I, 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 oh, that thing. Whatever. <laughs> Some copper pipes. But, okay. I mean, I guess that's evidence of my my novice nature. The point is, as he, I didn't know what he's doing. This helped me. I've been doing this now with my students. I get kids that were kicked out for smoking dope. They come in and spend their lunch choosing to do it. Instead of failing, they're passing now because they want to solder. <laughs> what? No one would believe this. I, I can hardly believe it. I got this kid named Caitlin. I don't think I can tell your last name. She brought in a bunch of dope brownies. All, <laughs> gave it to all her buddies. They all got high and sitting there like giggling. I don't know. It could have been oregano for all I know. But they thought it was dope. Kid got kicked out for two months. Failing everything. She's been coming in because it's interesting. I wouldn't have figured that out if it wasn't for this. I learned how to solder appropriately, not just from just like a, a, a you know, a, a, a meeting or something like that, but it was actual teachers showing me and telling me how to apply it. That was very, very useful. So if you ever have teachers coming in here, Lordy, send them this way. It is absolutely worth every penny. Fox hunt. I never even thought of that. You guys ever see Red Dawn? You know when like the, the commies, they like make one of their buddies swallow the little repeater and the commies find him and then they have to dust him and then Patrick Swayze like he shoots his buddy and all that. Don't shoot your buddy. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Fox Hunt. It's brilliant. Satcom. There's more coming up on that. Eris. We're going to talk. We've already got it approved. Woodridge Middle School is talking to the International Space Station this autumn. I wouldn't have been able to figure that out except for you. And that. Thanks. That's awesome. No, yeah, you ought to. Good for you. Here's another weird thing. This was actually just a side note. Uh, it turns out one of my classmates from West Point is actually going to be in the space station. I didn't know that. Uh, so, like, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm out there. And then I get this random email. Hey, Leighborn, how's it going? It's Morgan. I'm like, Drew, you're an astronaut? So, hey, whatever. All right. So this goes back to sustainability. Grants and radio setup. Okay, build an FM radio. So when I went down... So talking to the folks there, we looked at, at uh, you know, over at Dayton. Uh, neat place. If you get a chance to go there, worth, worthwhile. They do the, uh, the uh, ham, ham uh, fests and, and things along those lines there. It's a neat place. Neat stuff. Learned a ton. Wright Brothers. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Uh, Warped Wing Brewery. I don't know if beer is your thing, but it's pretty good. Grants and Radio Setup. Uh, we talked about different kits that they had out there, and they, they sent me in the right direction for getting some different uh, kits that are out there, way better than what I was going to. Don't have students build a crystal radio. <laughs> Lordy, don't do it. But we found 
reasonably priced kits, but even a reasonably priced kit at let's say 14 bucks, that's expensive over 150 people. So that wasn't sustainable because even if I'm like, Mrs. Umfleet, oh, may I talk to you? Yeah, sure, Tom, come on in. Can I have $2,000? No, get out of here. So that, you know, that's, it's not sustainable. So I had to try and find a source for revenue. Grants. I'm probably more articulate than your average bear, and I've been very successful at finding different sources of revenue through grants. I've been able to find some. So I've been able to support this for a little while, but it's not sustainable for the long run. We'll get there in a little while. AMSAT. AMSAT is, these are, if the ham radio people are nerds, the AMSAT people are like the emperors of the nerds. Because they, lordy, they build satellites. And like, you go there, you don't even know what they're saying. I, I, but they're brilliant. And it's so cool. I went down to Huntsville, listened to those folks talk, and threw my hat in the ring, and it worked. I think they felt sorry for me, but I don't care. But it worked. ARRL, Farmers Insurance, and different grants. I've had success with these grants. I'm not complaining. Some of it, I think, is just because people aren't trying. Uh, but I hope they don't start trying because... I've been very successful lately, and I'm just I'm going to keep doing it until I can get something that is sustainable for the long term. So in getting these FM radio kits, even though that was kind of cool, I had to find something which was sustainable for the long term. So I looked at a hybrid. You guys know what foremen are? A foreman. Yeah, of course you do. So radio kits are more expensive than a clock digital clock. When I went to the TI, the uh, Teachers Institute, they had us build a clock. It's like 10 bucks. 10 bucks is less than $14. I mean, I, math isn't my strong suit, but I mean, and there you go. So this was my thought. I can cherry pick some kids, which are more better at doing stuff and have them be my foreman. Now, don't worry, I don't actually say more well actually I do say more better but they know that and I know that's wrong too but anyway. uh, so I cherry pick these kids to be my foreman they their ticket to getting additional credit is the radio has to work and they have to take it home and build it with their family not with me I've only had one radio come back that doesn't work. I'm okay with that. So if a kid that was living in dang trailer park comes back and is like, hey dad, will you, do you know anything about soldering? <laughs> yeah, sure, I used to solder all the time. Will you help me with this? Oh man, I really wanna go get strung out on heroin or I really wanna go and drink tonight or I wanna help my kid bend resistors okay I'll take that I win more importantly all of us win those foremen have been coming in at lunch and helping me because we're not even starting the prod third quarter doesn't start for another month or excuse me fourth quarter when we do the the clocks doesn't start for another month those kids have been coming in trying to help the other kids learn how to solder so that they're ready for making their clocks. Your fault. <laughs> Your fault. True. Success. Uh, SATCOM, we're gonna talk with satellites. We're gonna talk, my goal, use guys. Uh, this guy, there's a couple of, this guy. You guys help me set up radios. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's working. Uh, HF antenna I had to take down because the wind was going to bust it out of the masonry. But the high school, their shop class is building a bracket to set up the antenna so it doesn't bust out. So we have other agencies getting involved so we can hold the antenna up because we're going to talk to Berlin. Why not? If you're an eighth grader, 
Hey, kiddo, you know what we're doing today? No, Mr. Layborn. Talk to Berlin. Hello, this is Helmut. Okay, talk to Berlin. That is going to keep that kid in school. So the way ahead for this, you can see where this is all going. Foreman, students are going to be teaching each other. Not just me. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not just going you know, like to bail out. That's not my gig. But they have ownership. Because a kid's going to listen to his peer a lot more than he will me. Well, they're going to listen to me, whether they like it or not. <laughs> but they're going to listen to their buddies. Contesting. I like it. More contesting. You're going to hear more of us. Mark my words. Satcom. I got these, there's these cards that if you call somebody uh, and they call you back, was it QS? Those. Got a whole bunch of them. Now I'm going to make these kids call everybody and their uncle. And we're going to send these things out. I'm going to paste them all over my classroom. Whether they like it or not. Eris. <laughs> we have successfully got our hat in the ring. Now granted, it may not happen this autumn if like a meteor hits the space station or I don't know, something horrible. But we're going to talk to these guys. You can do it every four years from a different, but within the same district, anybody can do it. Okay, Northwest has got 11 different schools. I'm setting up a process so that a Northwest school is going to be talking to that space station every single year. Because if they do, then those kids are always thinking about science. And then they're going to graduate. And then they're not going to die under a bridge. You with me? And then TI2 and NOAA. I want, do you know that kids can actually let off weather balloons? With, I didn't know that until I went to dang Huntsville. I guess that's a thing. Dude, I want to do that too. And fox hunting. I'd hit a bill uh, sometime. I shot him. I was like, hey, can we do this? He's like, oh, yeah, sure, Tom, okay. And then, you know, because it, it, was, it was very impetuous on my part. You know what? We're going to get them. I'll get them. When I get them, I'm going to give them to you guys so you can hand them out to other schools. You get me, and make sure you get them back to me at, when I want them, but we're going to get those things. All right. Next. Project-based instruction. Uh, hey, if I get long-winded... Uh, I need a tag. You give me the, like, the signal if it's time for me to, to be quiet. All right, project-based instruction. That kid right there is from the Ukraine. Uh, grew up in an orphanage. <coughs> Complete pain in the you-know-what. He's actually been doing okay. Wasn't doing okay before. I'm, I'm pretending to yell at him. Projects engage students more so than just traditional lecture. But this is different. A lot of, a lot of educators try and default to, oh, well, technology will help them out. And just set kids in front of a computer screen and have them go on web, que web quests and look around on the Internet. That isn't going to help them either. Because guess what they're not going to be doing? doing research and looking around the internet. They're gonna, they'll be looking around the internet, but not what you want them to. But if you give them something to do, you put some stuff in front of them, and you stay over them, you'll be absolutely astonished by their ingenuity. Uh, it also has to be very visible, not just for the students, but for their peers. Because if their peers see it, then they start paying attention because they don't want to look like a boob in front of their buddy. Um, one for each quarter. I told you about the egg drop atomic model trebuchet and the radio and clock. Involving family and community. This was a mistake on my part, but a good mistake. I wanted their families to actually participate in this because I remembered very distinctly when I did stuff with my mom and my dad, it was a lot more meaningful than if I was doing it with one of my buddies. My buddies are great people. I keep in touch with one of them, but I still keep in touch with all of my family. So 
the kids that were going back and talking to their family members that maybe they weren't that engaged before, now they're actually paying attention. And it, no joke, there is an actual pattern where their damn grades went up. I'm okay with that. An objective or goal to move towards each quarter. Any of you guys been in the service? Probably a lot of you. I knew one thing for certain. When I knew what my objective was, I knew what I had to go towards. It was easier to move towards that thing than if it was just some sort of nebulous thing where the boss came in and was like, all right, Captain, check it out. I don't know what I want, but I'll know it when I see it. You don't know what that is. But if you know what the objective is, you will do X. Then it's a lot easier. When you're a kid, that's a hell of a lot easier. Sweet spot of challenging and doable. This is, this is like the challenge of the foxhole radio. Challenging, foxhole radio. Doable, not a foxhole radio. <laughs> Doable is, okay, here, son, here's a kit that has the instructions. You got to do it with your folks. Go home. Your folks are going to do this? I'll talk to them on the phone. Yeah, sure. All right. You don't get credit unless the radio works. By the way, it's FM, which is better than Foxhole Radio, which is AM. And if you're in Cedar Hill, you can only listen to the one spot that's in Herculaneum. <laughs> and if you don't like baseball, yeah, you're, you're doomed. <laughs> anyway, don't, don't do. If you haven't concluded anything, don't do a Foxhole Radio. All right. Crystal. Yeah, Crystal Radio. I mean, potato, patata, Crystal Radio. I, I mean, I think Foxhole... We had like a safety pin, and there's like some other nonsense. Uh, way harder. No, don't do it. All right. All right. Crystal radio. Don't do it. So, not easy to do. Limited reception. AM. Everyone I heard told me don't do it. I, I, you've probably can. I don't think I even need this slide anymore. I think you've probably come to the conclusion. But it worked, by the way. Just so you know, I got it to work. It's pretty happy. All right, so don't make a crystal radio with a bunch of eighth graders. All right, however, FM radios and clocks. Okay, I, these things have been an absolute home run. Um, there's like umpteen skillion different little digital clock kits that you can get. And there's several FM radio kits that you can get, which are, you don't even have to be that creative. It's already built for you. Yes, I would like to get to the point where I can, they have mills and stuff that will make these things, or make the circuit board, maybe one day. But for right now, this is working really well because my foremen are eating this stuff up. They like the responsibility, and they're actually doing a really good job. Um... If I send a, a radio home with a kid, because there's a bunch of stuff involved in a radio, I know for a fact that they can police up their peers to build a dang clock. A clock ain't got that many pieces on it. A radio has got a lot. It's got a lot of different things on it. Not just like the little, it's got oscillators and transistors and like umpteen zillion things on it. So it's a clock, but not like, not like a radio. <coughs> Potentiometers. <laughs> probably, you're probably making fun of me and you're right. All right. The foreman, the, the foreman has been a, using them has been an absolutely brilliant positive effect. I've also been able to engage other different, or other teachers, not just science, but like our shop teacher. Uh, when you build the radio, you got just a circuit board. Well, he's been making these little stand things. So he's had his students in their engineering class make the little stands for him. Uh, our art teacher has been painting my ceiling tiles. For you guys that went there, you, or went to my classroom, you saw the ceiling tiles. I'm painting like schematics of radios and stuff on the dang ceiling tiles. 
So the students, instead of just having it white to look at, they're looking up, they're like, Mr. Laybourne, what's a transistor? Well, actually, we want to know. So it gives me an opportunity. It ties into those next generation science standards, NGSS, circuits, electricity, and waves. And it's a backdrop of radio communications. In the background, in my classroom, I've got a UHF, VHF, and I've got a HF radio. I haven't got the HF radio up yet. I'm going to get there once they get the bracket. But the goal is no joke in the background. I want a dang oscilloscope that's all wavy and doing crazy stuff. And I want radios bleeping off just under audible. You can hear it, but it's not crazy. But I want beep, 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 because it's showmanship. I'm not going to lie to you. If I can keep them interested, Mr. Labor, what's going on? Uh, what do you mean? Beep, 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 beep. What are they saying? Oh, hang on a second. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, uh, oh, Mr. Johnson needs some milk. Okay. <laughs> do, do, do. Oh, hang on a second. Let me tell him where to get something. <laughs> 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 you know, that kind of ridiculousness. You guys heard of apple slices? It's like this outfit in New York City. They've got a, another middle school there that has uh, a, a, a radio station. I'm trying to do something similar. All right, phenomenon. Um, the phenomenon idea or this, these remarkable things that are going on that kids are witnessing. Uh, again, I, I'm not an educator by profession. That wasn't my gig. I just know what I thought was really neat when I was a little boy, when I was that age. So I was like, you know what? Okay, I need to find stuff that was neat when I was 14. Van de Graaff generator. You guys know what a Van de Graaff generator is? Do you know that there's like no schools that got those things anymore? It's that it's supposedly a hazard. It's not. There's no, there's no evidence. There's no, like I, I looked around. I was like, hey, attorney for the school, can I have a Van de Graaff generator? What's a Van de Graaff generator? This thing. Uh, yeah. So there. Yes, <laughs> 600,000 volts. How many, how much resistance? I mean, but it's not going to kill you. Virtually no power. None. Well, I mean, it does. Virtually. Not going to kill you, but it, oh, who? It stings. It gets your attention. I mean, I, I'm gambling that there's, <laughs> huh. hey, here we go. All right. All right, 14-year-old, you got a pacemaker? Oh, crapped out. I guess he can visit me in prison. I was talking about construction. <laughs> when that happens, all right, kids. Yeah, you can come and visit me at my funeral. Fantagraph generator. I, I wouldn't even have thought about this ex unless I was starting to examine different phenomena. I've made more money with that, this ridiculous Vandegraaff generator than you can possibly imagine. Kids swarm in there because they want to like it's a big joke for them. They all like put their hand on it. They all reach over to the doorknob and they're waiting. And I know they're doing it. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll come to the room now. And I'm like, Ugh. and they're like, ah. so they can see me get shot. I know it's going to happen. Eris. I'll, I'll tell you what, if you can find another school that's got a dang Van de Graaff generator, give 50 bucks. Just in case you do find one, I, what I really meant was a high five. <laughs> All right, Eris, transmission to space science. Um, I don't think anyone's asking for this stuff. NASA's like begging for people to pay attention to them because they need people. India, China, they're sending folks up. Lots of them. They're really hungry for it. Do you guys know that China's got like two s satellites on the other side of the moon? They're looking to actually build a space station over there? <laughs> like, no joke. So the more we can actually take advantage of this, sure, nationally, that's awesome. Short term, 
showing the kids how this is something that's really relevant to their lives, that keeps them in school, keeps them coming back. No joke. Another kid named Bowley. <laughs> He's coming in because he wants to be an astronaut now. He probably has a long way to go. <laughs> but you know what? He wouldn't even have been paying attention if it wasn't because this stuff is getting shoved down his throat at school. He lives in a pretty rough area. SATCOM, talking on a dang satellite. Talking on satellites, I'll level with you. Not that interesting. Unless you're an eighth grader and you're sitting there and you know that you just talked to somebody in Australia or Canada or Mexico or whatever. It's like a cone. I guess it wouldn't be Australia unless you hit like some other deal because it's like a cone. But you can get that thing. It's very fleeting. And they're sitting there and it's active because they're holding an antenna and they're pointing. Okay, well, AO, you know, 89 is right there. They got a compass and all that. So it's very active and interactive. You guys see what I'm saying? Mm, it's a challenge. Yes. You got to be switched on. You can't just sit there in front of a computer screen going, mm -hmm. yep, Newton. All right. <laughs> Newton's laws. Four equals mass. Okay. <sighs> Whatever. They're actively doing it. 3D printer. This was another. Was an I did, you guys had a presentation about 3D prints. Uh, I got a 3D printer. Didn't know what I was getting into. My principal sent out a random email. I was like, hey, does anyone want a 3D printer? I was like, yeah, I sure want it. What's a 3D printer? <laughs> so I threw my hat in the ring. I got this Dremel fabulous 3D printer. This thing's another home run. But it's another one of these things. It's just this same deal of being associated with science and radio and rockets and all this stuff that now it's just like, growing on itself it like it's it keeps snowballing um, high frequency hf come hell or high water i'm going to talk to berlin <laughs> you will hear about this i'm gonna do it uh i just gotta get my antenna up. all right oh, oh that's a laser sorry all right competitions um i have students compete with one another for their projects each quarter uh, so like when they make an atomic model project, they have to compete against one another. Uh, I got these, the ribbons. Uh, I teach summer school too. One of the classes I teach at summer school is rockets. I make model rockets and I also teach physics and whatnot. Uh, but I always have at the end of summer school about a gross of first place ribbons, second and third place ribbons that are never gonna get used and it's gonna throw them away. So I hand them out like nobody's business. The kids eat them up. All right, hey, check it out, guys. Check it out. You're going to be, all right, we're going to vote on your atomic models. Now, they have to meet the requirements, but then they vote against one another. It has got kids coming back to school because they want to be there so they can compete against their buddies. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, it ties into other subjects. QSL cards I already talked about, fox hunts. I'd never heard about fox hunts until I went to the, uh, the, the TI Institute over there in Dayton. How awesome. Uh, around Woodridge, there's, a, there's these woods. You know, I was just going to get like some stuffed animals or something like that and stick a, you know, a, like the little transponder in it and be like, be like Steve Irwin. That's his birthday today. Did you know that? Be like, crikey. There's a, you guys, there's a crocodile out in the woods. You gotta go and find it. And the kid will be, meow, meow, go out and find the dang, find himself a crocodile. Not an actual crocodile. That'd be way cooler. All right. Relevance of TI, uh, I'm not gonna belabor that one. If there's anything that you take away from this, it's this. Bam. Low cost uh, for a school district, it costs them zero dollars i think the total price tag was like 1600 for they, they paid for my airplane ticket they paid for my my hotel stay wow uh, but you know what 
schools send teachers to, it's called PDs or professional developments all the time. Okay, if my tax dollar has got to be spent somewhere, this is better than having someone talk about, well, you know, if you can really get into the mind of the child and you can find that the child is part of you. No, that's nonsense. This is useful. This is meaningful. And it's cheap. Not cheap like cheap, cheap, but it's sustainable. Sustainable is a better word. All right. Um, relevance for students. This was one of the zingers that I, I think was very, very meaningful for me and for my, you see some of my kiddos there <laughs> being ridiculous. But anyway, uh, okay, building a clock, yes, is one thing. But they see how those, those components actually go into all kinds of other stuff. And it makes them interested in tech. Uh, that kid, Bully, it's him and these three other boys. Uh, all of them live, and, and this is not a gig on people who live in this kind of situation. All of them live in a pretty rough trailer park. Uh, the two other boys, also very rough family, family lives. They like coming in at lunch. And Bully made the comment of, this is really soothing to solder. <laughs> you know what? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's kind of cool to sit there and you can kind of turn off that. What was that? There's some movie with, it's like a baseball player. He says, clear, clear the mechanism. And he like shuts everybody else. Yeah, that one. He's like, clear the mechanism. He shuts out the audience. Yeah. You can sit there and you can dink around with the stuff. You know what? If a kid can shut off something that's awful so he can focus on education to making himself better, uh, okay, I want, I want that. That's what this does. Earning your tech license. Uh, I've been cutting my teeth on this a little bit. Haven't got there. One day, one day, Cliff, I will be at your level <laughs> where you like, you sprinkle glitter and, and make, people, make people love radio. I'll get there. But in the meantime, I've been like, hey, you know, I can talk to someplace other and they're like, that's what's really great, Mr. Laborn. Can we solder some more? I'm like, okay, fine, son. So anyway, uh, but they, you know, baby steps. We'll get there. Um, I like that they're working their families. A lot, a lot of these families are pretty rough. Uh, they are. Um, not, you can't sugarcoat it. Use your imagination. It's that bad. Uh, I say to inspire students to seek STEM-related careers. Um, probably the first thing I should say is keep kids in school. I'd rather, ki I want kids to just graduate. Uh, radio is really neat. I want them to graduate. I don't want them to die. Everybody dies, but I want them to die when they're a geezer, not when they're 18. If by some chance, it gets them in some sort of STEM-related field, which there are, what is it, up to 40% of new jobs now are STEM-related? Okay, I'm totally on board with that. But I know this much, just sitting there and giving them the same stuff is not going to do it. This is the way that's going to inspire them. All right, sustainment. Here's kind of the clincher, money. I've been pretty successful in hunting down grants. I go rowing out in my little dinghy, and I got, I'm like, Queequeg, -que, roll faster. And I see, I see the dreadful whale of money, and I'm like, gotcha. <laughs> but these things are fleeting. Uh, you can see some of the ones I've been able to land so far. With grants, I think so far I've pulled in about 12, in a year and a half of teaching, I've pulled in about, Twelve hundred or $12,000. Hey, hey, good for me. Hey, I'm happy. I got enough to sustain me for a couple of years. I'm going to die. And someday, I am marked for death just like all of you. So the guy or the gal that comes after me has to have some mechanism 
so that they can follow in behind me because they may not have my energy or art articulateness, articularity, whatever it is. So since district funds are limited because that's going to be, there's like a sine curve or something like that based off, hey, feast, oh, famine, sorry, you don't get anything this year. That has to be something that's more sustainable. Fundraising. Any of you guys ever done fundraising? Any of you guys got kids or grandkids or something like that? And you go and do like a bake sale and you pull in $50. You pull in $70. What's $70 going to get you? Chicken feed. Not a lot. So I had to have something better. Um, been working on building a nonprofit. Wasn't even my idea. There's another guy that like plopped in my lap. This is another one of your your gigs. You pushed that guy in my way, didn't you? Or was it you? There was some day. Uh, Reeves? Where's Reeves? Uh, Dan Reeves. He's like an attorney. He plopped in my lap. He's like, hey, can I do anything? I'm like, uh, yeah, you know anything about nonprofits? Yeah. Okay, here. And he's been working on this. Because the idea is this. If I can get a nonprofit, what is it, 501, 3C, one of those. To actually, because, yes, I would think it would be really neat to have a radio station. That's not my purpose. My purpose is not to encourage amateur radio. I don't want to deceive any of you. My purpose is to promote kids to survive. I want them to graduate. And I want to use radio as a tool to do that. Uh, so he's been helping me do that because I think that's going to be more sustainable than me swimming around in the oceans of, uh, of grant money. All right, and heiress contact. You mark my words. Come hell or high water, I'm going to get this heiress thing going each year for, for Northwest or somebody. So, yeah, all right. What are your questions, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Good, good. It's, well, that's part of it. Yeah. There's radio. There's soldering. There's tied some bowling balls to my roof <laughs> and made a giant Newton's cradle. So it's science, yeah. but radio is a component of it. I don't want to deceive you and be like, the only thing is radio. It's, just, it's, 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 a, it's a slice. Absolutely. In the background of the class, when you guys are talking to each other in the morning, you're, you're being listened to by a bunch of eighth graders. Talk. Talk more. You're on the 85, right? Yes, sir. Sir. How many years have you been doing this? This is my second year. Have you had any, uh, you talk about involving families, and I was not expecting to hear that. Have you heard any stories from any parents that have come up to you and said, hey, here's what happened? Yes. Uh, interestingly enough, there, uh, actually, look behind you. Not even as fun as that one. That, and that's awesome. High five. That's my plot. I didn't even ask him to sit there. It's just happening. There. There's, a, there's a dude who's from Hungary. So he's from Hungary. He's an immigrant. And his daughter's in my class. Wicked smart. I was like, okay, Sophia. Hey, I got something for you. Yes, Mr. Laymore. You're going to build a radio. I don't know if I can build a radio. You ain't got a choice. Take it home, build a radio. Okay. So she goes home. I get this call. Hello, Mr. Laybourne. And I'm like, this is Laybourne. Hello. This is, you know, whatever his name. I don't even remember. It's like Helmut or something like that. But anyway, it's like, I love to build the radio. So again, anyway, so it was like this, thank you so much for taking interest in Sophia. It's just like in Budapest. You know, like, okay, man, all right, East Block, do your thing, man. So, yes, it's absolutely having a positive impact. That's great. That's great. Anybody, what do you got? It gives them the chance at skills to develop and maybe earn more money or sure. do more interesting things. I, you know what? And I, deep down, I don't care if the kid becomes like a engineer or something like that. It's, it's problem solving. 
they're gonna they're gonna get flat and instead of being on the side of the road and be like, well, guess I better call AAA. I'm just gonna starve. They're gonna be like, hey, you know what? I know I can fix. It's freaking flat. I can fix this because of little stuff like that. It's all these. I did a radio. I can do a flat tire. Hell yeah, <laughs> dude! I built a I built a freaking clock. Okay. Hey, our airplanes just our airplanes just crashed. We're gonna build a freaking boat. We're gonna we're gonna get out of here or build a be like Gilligan's Island. Yes, that's exactly right, sir. So uh, the school administration, are those people are relatively supportive. I mean, <laughs> maybe they don't have funding, but do they encourage you or at least reward you? Initially, they thought I was nuts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they still do, but they love you. I I will tell you this much. <laughs> I, <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, my my principal, a lady named Ms. Umphley, initially she's like, all right, Mr. Laborn, go ahead. You could tell it's like, okay, well, I'll throw the dice. And it's like, oh, well, it worked. Okay, do it again. And it, <laughs> so like, and it kept working. They, they have given me, I, I have absolutely great things to say about Northwest District. They've let me do everything that I have asked to do with just me saying, "Hey, here's my idea. Let me go with it." Uh, so I, I'm I'm very pleased with them. So, you, so I mean, there are a lot of dedicated teachers, but you've gone beyond just bringing in supplies. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's you be acknowledged for that. I hope they do that. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, I, let me do it. I got a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what, what has this done for the truancy? Oh, truancy has gone down. I was telling them about that dopehead kid, right? They they come in. Some of them not gonna reach. I'm not gonna lie to you. Some kids, as um, unless I tackle them, hog tie them, and say you're gonna sit there. I can't do that. Uh, they're not gonna come in because they have decided, even in eighth grade, that they want to fail. But because it's interesting enough to where they're coming in. There's some kids that, I mean, there, there's always a, a pattern of kids not coming in. Like this snow, we had a snow day on Wednesday. What a pain in the you know what. Yeah, there was like the usual suspects of kids not coming in. But the kids that were, have some kind of choice in the matter, like their parents aren't the ones saying, hey, you're staying home. They're just doing what they want. They're coming in because it's more interesting than staying home and I'd rather I'll take that if they're going to come into school rather than just hang out in you know a not very beneficial env environment then they got a chance so they're coming in they're, you're helping be the catalyst for this but if they're coming in they're spending time in English they're spending time in the math yes classes. they're spending time in history it's not just science I don't get all the credit it's the entire organism. Yes. Do you see the same energy in the science and in the math, in the history, in the English? Uh, there has, not going to lie, I'm a pretty energetic guy. Uh, but I have seen a infectious energy spill into some of the other subjects. Uh, some of them, not so much. Yes. So, there's there's got to be more that brings them back. There, uh, our, uh, our shop teacher, an engineering teacher, our art teacher, and one of our history teachers have been extraordinarily vigorous and supportive of this entire endeavor. Uh, so because we got more energy, uh, it's, it's infectious. Even the ones that really want to, it's not that cool, they can't help but be vigorous when the kids are vigorous. Uh, so that's, that's what we're finding. So the, the energy is infectious. I didn't even know any better. Uh, so I guess that's a good thing. So this is my second year. So I don't know what bad or good looks like. So and there we go. It, it's just the... Is this the, the, the cane? All right. All right.